Good afternoon. This is All India Radio and I'm Valsa Williams with the Midday News. The headlines Prime Minister Narendra Modi and German Chancellor Angela Merkel hold delegation level talks in New Delhi today both countries commit to combat terrorism and extremism 5 lakh government vehicles to be converted into e vehicles to make them eco friendly and cost effective says union minister Prakash Javdekar Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor stresses on timely utilization of funds for centrally sponsored schemes to reach the target population Several states and union territories celebrate their formation day today. And in sports, Indian woman grappler Pooja Gehlot enters the finals of UWW Under-23 World Championships 2019 in Budapest and Indian men and women hockey teams to play their qualifier matches for 2020 Tokyo Games in Bhubaneswar today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said India and Germany will strengthen bilateral and multilateral efforts to combat terrorism and extremism making a statement after the delegation level talks with German Chancellor Angela Merkel Mr Modi said both the countries are also working on opportunities in e mobility smart cities inland waterways and environment conservation He said Angela Merkel has played a significant role in the last 15 years to strengthen Indo-German ties. आतंकवाद और उग्रवाद जैसे खतरों से निपटने के लिए हम बायलेटरल और मल्टीलेटरल सहयोग को और घनिष्ठ बनाएंगे. The Prime Minister invited Germany to explore opportunities in defence corridor of India. हम जर्मनी को आमंत्रित करते हैं कि रक्षा उत्पाद के क्षेत्र में उत्तर प्रदेश और तमिलनाडु में डिफेंस कॉरिडोर में अवसरों का लाभ उठाएं भारत और जर्मनी के विश्वास और मित्रतापूर्ण संबंध डेमोक्रेसी रूल ऑफ लॉ जैसे साझा मूल्यों पर आधारित है Angela Merkel said agreements between India and Germany will strengthen ties between the two countries she congratulated India for moving towards renewable energy Several agreements related to new technology, artificial intelligence, agriculture, coastal management and education were signed between the two countries during the 5th Indo-German Intergovernmental Consultations. Chancellor Merkel, who arrived in New Delhi last night on a 3-day visit, was greeted by Prime Minister Narendra Modi at a ceremonial welcome at the four courts of the Rashtrapati Bhavan this morning. The German Chancellor is accompanied by several ministers and state secretaries of the federal government as well as a high-powered business delegation. Earlier she paid tributes to father of the nation Mahatma Gandhi at Rajghat. Dr Merkel will call on President Ramnath Govind in the evening. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit Thailand tomorrow to participate in the 16th ASEAN India Summit, 14th East Asia Summit and 3rd Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership RCEP. Talking to news persons in New Delhi yesterday, MEA Secretary East Vijay Thakur Singh said Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit Bangkok on the invitation of the Prime Minister of Thailand. She further said strengthening ASEAN and ASEAN led mechanism, enhancing connectivity, deepening economic partnership, enhancing cooperation in the digital domain including cyber security are the key agenda of the India ASEAN summit this year. Union Minister Prakash Javdekar today said that all the 5 lakh government vehicles on conventional fuel will be converted into e-vehicles in a phased manner. He said besides their cost effectiveness these e-vehicles are eco-friendly and save consumption of petrol and diesel. Addressing the media while flagging off the electric vehicles procured by the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting in New Delhi, Mr Javdekar said that these e-vehicles can play a major role in curbing high level of pollution in Delhi during winters. He said the government under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi has taken several initiatives to reduce pollution levels. शहरों में खास करके जहां लाखों वाहन चलते हैं वहां ई व्हीकल ज्यादा हो ये जरूरी है और इसके लिए भारत सरकार ने ई व्हीकल लेने वाले को सब्सिडी दिया है प्रोत्साहन दिया है इंसेंटिवाइज किया है 
The Information and Broadcasting Minister said during the last 15 years only discussions were done on the issue of pollution, but the NDA-led government has taken concrete steps to address the menace. He said construction of Eastern Peripheral Expressway has resulted in low level of pollution in Delhi NCR. More details from our correspondent. With the vision of 30% e-mobility, National e-mobility program was launched in India on 7th March last year. Procurement of 10,000 e-vehicles have already been completed. Till date, 754 e-cars have been deployed and 756 are under registration process. Minister of Road Transport and Highways Nitin Gadkari earlier said that all buses in the country would be converted into electric vehicles within a span of next two years. And this will run on bio-CNG, ethanol and methanol. But there will be no ban on petrol and diesel vehicles or make a switch to electric vehicles mandatory. With Bupendra, Sobhagya Air News. A Supreme Court-mandated panel today declared a public health emergency in the Delhi NCR region and banned all construction activity till the 5th of November of this month. In a letter written to Chief Secretaries of Uttar Pradesh, Haryana and Delhi, EPCA Chairperson Bhure Lal said air quality in Delhi NCR is in a severe category. He said this situation must be taken as public health emergency as air pollution will have adverse health impact on all, particularly our children. Jammu and Kashmir's Lieutenant Governor Girish Chandra Murmu has stressed the need for optimum and timely utilization of resources, particularly the funds available under the centrally sponsored schemes for all benefits to reach the targeted population. He was speaking during a meeting held with secretaries and senior most officers of the civil administration at the civil secretariat Srinagar yesterday. He advised the secretaries to work with complete transparency, sincerity and utmost commitment for public welfare and sought their cooperation in leading JNK towards the path of peace and prosperity. He directed them to ensure prompt and efficient delivery of public services to the people. A day after becoming a union territory, Ladakh is in festival mood today. LG RK Mathur joined in the celebrations going on in NDS Stadium in Ladakhi traditional attire. The festival is being celebrated annually from 2016 to acknowledge the glorious past, pride and identity of Ladakh. Today, the celebrations began at historic Lay Palace with traditional folk dance and music with introduction of characters of Ladakh King and Queen. Later, a procession with CEC, MP, EC members and religious leaders riding on horses along with King and Queen followed by the King's Army. On Lay Manali Highway, CEC Gyal Vangyal unveiled the statue of Great King of Ladakh, Singe Namgyal. With Sesan Tashi, Ramesh and Radio News, Lay. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates, visit our News on AIR app and follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. You can also visit our website www.newsonair.com. The states of Karnataka, Kerala, Punjab, Haryana, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh are celebrating their formation day today. Union territories of Lakshadweep, Puducherry, and Man and Nicobar also have their foundation days today. President Ramnath Kovind and Prime Minister Narendra Modi have greeted the people on the occasion. In his message, the President said, May these regions and the country scale newer heights in the years to come. In a series of tweets, Prime Minister wished the people of these states happiness, prosperity, and all round development. Puducherry is celebrating its 65th Liberation Day today. On the occasion, Chief Minister V. Narayanisamy unfurled the tricolor and inspected a guard of honor by the Puducherry Armed Police. The Chief Minister also inaugurated a photo exhibition on the history of Puducherry organized by the Tourism Department. Karnataka is celebrating its formation day today. It was on November 1, 1956, that all Kannada-speaking regions were merged to form Karnataka. Chief Minister B.S. Yadiyurappa unfurled the Kannada flag in Bengaluru today. He will felicitate 64 eminent personalities with Raj Yotsav Award in the evening. Our correspondent says this is the first time the Tamil Nadu Day is being celebrated in the state, marking its formation from the erstwhile Madras presidency. 
the yes while Madras presidency has been headquartered in Madras which is now Chennai Andhra Pradesh has been carved out from the province in 1953 and Karnataka and Kerala in 1956 the rest of the province became the Madras state which was later named as Tamil Nadu in 1969 the state currently remains as one of the biggest economies in the country enjoys a robust health and higher education system and a lot of UNESCO world heritage site jai singh ar news chennai Kerala lights across the globe are celebrating the formation day highlighting culture and tradition of the state various programs and activities have been organized by the state government local authorities along with participation of students and civilians The cyclone Maha in the Arabian Sea has crossed Lakshadweep and is now centered over East Central Arabian Sea about 300 kilometers north of Cherapani Reef in the meteorological department says no adverse weather is likely over Lakshadweep as the cyclone is moving away northwestwards it said light to moderate rain is expected in middle maharashtra konkan goa and south gujarat in the next 24 hours fishermen have been asked not to venture into the sea Indian woman grappler Pooja Gehlot has entered the finals after beating Turkey's Zeynep Yetkil in the semi-finals of the UWW Under-23 World Championships 2019 in Budapest last night. Pooja scripted a superb comeback as she fought her way from a 2-4 deficit to win 8-4 against Yetkil. In the summit clash today, Pooja will be up against Haruno Okuno of Japan. No Indian has ever won a gold in the last three editions of the UWW Under-23 World Championships. In hockey, the Indian men's team will take on lower-ranked Russia, while their female counterparts will play against the USA in the two-legged Olympic qualifiers at Bhubaneswar today. Both the Indian teams will play back-to-back matches against USA and Russia at 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. The aggregate winners at the end of the two-match qualifier for men and women will seal their places in the 2020 Tokyo Games. In Bihar on the second day of Chhat Puja festival Karna would be observed this evening with this the 36 hour long fast of devotees without water would begin more from our correspondent Chhat festival related to worship of nature and the sun god gives message of communal harmony and social existence also this year more than 2000 inmates from different jails across the state are performing chhat puja administration have arranged essential puja items and dug ponds for arg inside jail premises people started thronging at sun temples of historic and mythological importance at deo ular hadia and badgaon dharmendra kumar rai air news Patna Chavang Kut the post harvest festival of the Kukishin Mizo communities is being celebrated across northeastern states with traditional gaiety and enthusiasm the festival marks the Anglo Kuki war centenary year in Manipur Mizoram and Assam and other parts of the country the festival is organized every year as thanksgiving for a bountiful harvest it is one of the most important festivals of Kukishin Mizo communities it is a state holiday in manipur inaugurating the state level festival in manipur capital imphal this morning governor dr najma heptullah said these festivals are perfect for removing the monotony of life and help the people lead a fuller and better life miss kut contest will be held in the evening today in mizoram this is the third time the festival is being celebrated today state home minister mr lal chamliana has graced the chavan kut celebration in aizol today In the festival in Aizol this year the Chinkuki Mizo tribal groups have highlighted traditional social events shows food and music events and now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again Prime Minister Narendra Modi and German Chancellor Angela Merkel hold delegation level talks in New Delhi today both countries commit to combat terrorism and extremism 5 lakh government vehicles to be converted into e vehicles to make them eco friendly and cost effective says Union Minister Prakash Javdekar Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor stresses on timely utilization of funds for centrally sponsored schemes to reach the target population 
Several states and union territories celebrate their formation day today. In sports, Indian woman grappler Pooja Gehloth enters finals of UWW Under-23 World Championships 2019 in Budapest. And with that, we end the midday news.